Hi, my name is Chris. Welcome to my studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I painted this abstract version of a sunflower in watercolor. Let's get started. Welcome everybody to my studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to paint a sunflower. Here's a, a previous painting I did of an abstract sunflower. I shared it on social media, got a lot of positive feedback, asked people if they wanted to see a tutorial, and they said yes. So here we are. And I'm, I, I may not end up with a sunflower that looks exactly like this, but this is part of my inspiration. I also have this uh, uh, to this reference image uh, that a friend uh, took a picture of, of a sunflower, shared it with me, asked her if, she, if I could paint it. She said yes. So uh, that's also an inspiration. I, I'm not necessarily going to try to replicate either of these references, whether, whether it's this picture or, or my previous painting, um, but they're inspirations. Okay, since I started my video, my power went out, so you probably can hear my generator in the background. Sorry about that. Hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, before I get started with the painting, I want to talk a bit about supplies. A lot of people ask me what I'm using. Uh, first of all, the paints. Uh, I decided on this palette for this particular painting. Uh, I have Azo Yellow by M. Graham, New Gamboge by Daniel Smith. I have Nickel Quinacridone Gold by M. Graham. I love that color. Very grainy. Love it. Permanent Alizarin Crimson, uh, also by M. Graham. I have Dioxazine Purple, which is a really dark and not very transparent color, but uh, that's going to be for the center of the flower, M. Graham color. Thalo Blue, Green Shade by Daniel Smith. And then lastly, Green Gold, also a Daniel Smith color. Those are the colors I'm going to use here. It's kind of a lot of colors. Usually I try to limit myself to about five, but I added a few here, a few extras, and I, this is what I used in my previous one and I liked how it turned out. The permanent Lizard and Crimson will probably be used in pretty small amounts just to orange up my yellows a bit more, make them a little darker. And also the Thalo Blue is a pretty small hint of that. Uh, and the center of the flower is gonna be a lot of this purple color. Another question people often have is what brushes am I using? Um, this is a silver black velvet uh, number eight. It's probably the smallest one I'll use. Uh, except for at the end when I put in my signature. Uh, this is a silver black velvet uh, 12, one of my favorite brushes. Unfortunately, it got a little damage to it. If you want to learn more about my brushes, check out my other video on my channel. It talks a bit more about the brushes I use and the brands. Here's a Princeton Neptune 14. like that one a lot. And lastly, I got these new brushes by uh, Oku. This is a four. These are quill brushes and hold a lot of water. And uh, I'm going to be using that one as well. Okay, I'm going to start with my lightest color, my yellow. And again, I'm, I'm attempting a more abstract uh, version of a sunflower in this painting. And so I mean, I'm actually using an even bigger brush, my number six Oku quill brush, because I want to, I don't want to muss around with a lot of details here. I just kind of want to put in some suggestions of these um, flowers. So in a way, I'm, I'm really more than anything just laying the brush um, on its side. I have a slight incline to my paper, probably about, oh gosh, only like a 15 degree or so. It's not very steep, but I do have a little bit. Now again, I'm looking at somewhat at my reference image, um, which I've um, got there showing up on my, I'm using a, a tablet that I have my reference image on and um, I'm going to kind of add a little bit more of a yellow to that color. Uh, sorry, a bit more of my orange, which would be my quinacridone burnt orange uh, into my yellow. Get a little variety of color going here. Again, I'm, not, I'm just kind of dabbing this in and I'm not worrying too much about any details or anything yet. Okay. Now, with my wet still there, I'm going to come back, maybe some of my new gamboge and quinacridone burnt orange or burnt, quinacridone burnt gold, or hold it, what's it called? 
Quinacridone, nickel quinacridone gold is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, I'm going to emphasize some of this left hand side. Again, this is wet on wet, so I'm just placing it in here. The beautiful thing about flowers is, you know, they're, um, you don't have to labor over a lot of details with flowers just because they're somewhat, you know, every flower is different in terms of its shape and its petals and all. And so you can be a little bit more loose in your interpretation and it works out just fine. A little bit of my thalo blue now. And I see some shadowy areas in here. And I want to just lay down a little of that. Again, I took some of the thalo blue and kind of mixed it in with some of the yellow already on my palette. really hope that generator sound isn't driving you crazy too bad. It's kind of driving me crazy a little bit, but I'm trying to ignore it. Hopefully it's not ruining this video. We'll see, I guess. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that green gold, and I know that my Stem is coming in here somewhere. So that's more of a dry on dry now because I don't have anything there. And again, it's a real quick just sense of a of a stem. You saw how quickly I laid that down. I'm going to take a little bit more of my phthalo blue now and mix it in and go along there because there's a dark to this stem, especially close to the flower. Drop that in there. You see it's charging into the rest of that uh, area. Like that. Doing as much as you can wet on wet um, is good just because it gives you those advantages that you get in no other medium um, than watercolor is the ability to have the water flow and carry your paint where you might not have realized it wanted to go. All right, so now I've got my purple, Dax is on purple, and I'm going to come in and um, kind of taking the tip of the brush here and kind of because it, it kind of comes up into this yellow and all a little bit in here, but um, I don't want it to, to charge in all over the place, so I'm trying to be a bit more careful in places, creating hard edges, and in other places, creating more soft edges um, where those colors touch. Of course, it's going to diffuse and create more of a soft edge. And um, do that. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and mix it in with that purple because there's blue out in this section. Okay. Uh, it's very subtle in, in the picture. Um, you might go, wow, I don't see any blue there, but I, uh, you know, good. but it's, it's subtle, but it is there. And, and even if it's, if it's not there to this degree, it's nice to, to emphasize the colors a bit more. Um, use your imagination. Uh, let colors blend. Just really beautiful. In fact, I think I might come in and grab a little of my alizarin crimson, uh, my red that I showed you earlier, and also maybe um, maybe in areas where I really want to emphasize some dark in here, maybe put a bit of that. Again, letting it charge into the other colors. It's just going to create a beautiful, uh, a beautiful texture of colors. And... Um, Again, I'm looking for an abstract, an abstract 
um, treatment here. So as you can see how I'm using my, making my marks, so to speak, on the paper. I'm not being super detailed, I'm oftentimes just laying down the brush in different spots and um, putting the brush on its side to create shapes and things like that. And then you, you have to step back and just let it do its thing for a, a bit too. Sometimes um, you, uh, you want to give the color and the paper and the water time to react. And, and, and sometimes it takes a while. If we sat here and watched this, some of this charging in, these colors will continue to charge in for maybe a few minutes and, um, and you want to let that happen. And, and if you don't step back and wait, you may miss some of that. So slow down is one of my encouragements to people. I think people try to paint sometimes too fast and aren't patient enough. Oh, there we go. Look what I just did. Woo! Look at that. Wow. Just by touching that in there. I like it. I'm not sure I like it that strong. So I'm just going to come back and pick up some of that a little bit. So it's not quite so strong, but you know, there you go. It's watercolor. It did its own thing a little bit. And that's a perfect example. Of what this can do. It has a mind of its own. And again, your initial reaction might be kind of freak out, but I sometimes I just encourage you to stop and let it see what it's gonna do. I'm liking this in general. Again, I'm looking for an abstract treatment of a sunflower. Okay, I've waited for a few minutes, uh, letting it dry a bit. There's still some wetness, especially at the bottom of this area. I'm gonna be careful about touching in there, but I've mixed up a little of my alizarin crimson with my nickel, quinacridone gold, um, uh, and new gamboge maybe. I, I'm, I'm just thinking I want a little emphasis of a bit more of a red in here. So I'm gonna come in and just kind of uh, touch into some of these areas and just create a little bit more of interest in color. You can see it's not really charging too much in some of these areas just because it's already dried pretty well. And, um, but it is here, it's a little wetter here. Um, understanding what parts of your paper are still wet and what are not and how, and just really getting an understanding of how the um, paints are going to respond to uh, the paper, the wetness of the paper and all of that as you drop in. That, that is just something you have to get used to. It really, it, and a little bit of it is, is luck, <laughs> I think. Um, and, um, and it just comes with experience. I like that, I just like adding a little bit more variety of color in here. And um, yeah. I'm not gonna go a whole lot further with this. I really wanna leave this pretty simple. And um, yeah, I'm, again, I'm thinking about where the light's coming from in my picture. The light is definitely coming from this direction. So the lighter part of the petals where I've really used almost only yellows even leaving large areas uh, white, suggesting highlighting off the edges of these here, and then the darker side here, and so the darker side of, of, this, uh, of the center of the flower, as well as some of the darker orangey colors on this side as well, dark in this area of um, uh, the stem and where the stem is, is hitting. I think it be, might be nice to come back with even a bit more there. Um, and really emphasize that. Still wet, you can see how it's charging. 
So I want to be a little bit careful of that, but I'm I'm liking that. Um, and I'm putting some Dax Design purple in there um, and letting it charge into that green gold that I had there. And now I'm thinking, yeah, I want to come back. This is a smaller brush. I'm using this number two Oku quill. And I just want to maybe emphasize the dark side of this center of the flower even a bit more. Um, and it's still a little wet in there, so it's charging into some of those other areas. I'm going to let this dry now. Okay, the power came back on, so that noise is gone. Thank goodness. Here's the painting now after having waited and let it dry for about 10 minutes. Um, I did just add a little green wash down in here, just give a sense of some, of some leaves. I'm looking at it, trying to decide if it really needs anything else. I, I really like it. Uh, again, uh, this was to be a very uh, abstract representation of a sunflower and I think I, I, I like that. I'm, I'm looking, um, sometimes, boy, it's hard to know when to quit, isn't it? I mean, that can be the hardest thing. Uh, when to just, when to just stop, right? And um, sometimes I like that glazing look where I put another color on top of uh, colors that are already dry, by the way. Yep, this is, um, this this area in here, it's, everything in here is all dry, and you know that because if you touch it, it's not cold anymore. It's um, you know room temperature or something. It's not, um, and uh, that that's important to know. Um, you know if before you go back in and trying to do maybe some glazing like I'm doing right now, you need you need to know whether or not that's um, really completely dry or not, or else you you may get some other results that you weren't quite expecting. So I'm kind of playing around with darkening again this left hand side of the of a flower. Um, when you put a new wash down or a new application of pigment down on, on um, what's already dry you're going to end up glazing when you put different colors on top of colors. I love that technique. Um, I'm also really loving the, the granulation and different colors that I see in here. Let me see if I can zoom in on some of these areas. Yeah, okay, here is a little bit more close-up view of the colors, the uh, painting at this point. Again, my first wash, I put down all these, uh, most of this color was put down in the first wash. I just now just added a little bit of blue and alizarin crimson in here as a glaze over the center area, but otherwise this is pretty much my initial wash and I'm loving these uh, different mixing of colors again this is all done wet on wet so you see these beautiful charging of one color into another and that's what creates the beauty of watercolor in my opinion. Alrighty I've just added my signature to my artwork and I'm liking this. I think we are done. If you found this tutorial helpful uh, go ahead and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to like this video, click the like button and that helps other people find it.